OK, we're going to look at how we can apply frequency separation in photo and just get to grips with what it can actually offer us. So if you're not familiar with frequency separation, essentially what it does is it takes an image and distributes the frequencies that make up that image across two or more layers. So let's demonstrate this. I'm going to jump straight in, go to Filters, Frequency Separation. And what this filter will do is it will separate our chosen image layer into two different layers, a high frequency and a low frequency. So using the slider here, we can examine the relationship between these two frequency layers, and we can adjust their relationship by tweaking the radius slider. So increasing the radius slider will filter more of the detail into the high frequency layer as opposed to the low frequency layer and vice versa. So we're actually going to stick with roughly the default value, which was around two pixels. And we're going to click apply. OK, and if we have a look at the layers panel here, we'll see it's separated our image into high and low frequency layers. So let's take a look at exactly why we would want to split our image into these layers. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide the high frequency layer. And as you can see, that's taken away all of the fine detail. So all of our sharp, fine textured detail is contained on this layer. What that means is that we can go in on the low frequency layer, which as we can see contains more of the colors and tones in the image, and we can be quite brutal with it. We can mix them about, we can use the healing brush, the clone brush and so on to get rid of certain areas. But when we go ahead and show that high frequency layer, we've still got that sharp, rich textured detail there. So I'll hide that layer again, and we want to make sure we've selected the low frequency layer. Then I'm going to grab the Healing Brush tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the hardness down to zero. Then I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts to increase and decrease the brush width as I'm working. And to use the Healing Brush and the Clone Brush, we simply Alt or Option click on an area to heal from, like so, and then click drag over the area we want to alter. So what I'm doing here is basically sampling from adjacent areas and eliminating lines, wrinkles, blemishes, that type of thing from the low frequency layer. And you can also use it, as you can see here, to try and even out skin tone a little bit. And while we're at it, there's a mole down here I'll just tackle quickly. So we'll just grab a source from the neck down here and just heal over that mole. Increase the brush width. And then just try and go over the chin and just eliminate some of the inconsistent areas in the chin. OK, and also we've got a mark above the lip here. So we'll just sample from adjacent areas to remove that. And then we can move on to the wrinkles underneath and to the side of the eyes here. So again, the adjacent area this time is just underneath the wrinkles, like so. And then we've got a little bump on the nose, which we can also heal out. OK, and while we're here, we've just got a bit of reflection from the light on the model's forehead that we can heal over, like so. And then we'll leave the distinguishing marks like freckles and so on, because we're not trying to airbrush this model. 
And actually, when we step back and zoom out and take a look at the image, this can help us examine some areas that we might need to revise and go over again. So we can see here we've got a duplicated area. So just hewing over that again can help mitigate that. OK. So now then, let's turn on the high frequency layer again. And we've got all of our fine detail back. So now we can just tackle the high frequency content. And we can use the clone brush tool or the healing brush tool really for this. I'm going to use the healing brush tool, but when we're dealing with the high frequency content, ideally you want to bump the hardness right up to 100%. This prevents the soft areas of the brush from smudging and blurring the content as we heal over it. So you retain a fairly sharp result at the end. And we'll just take that hair out. We've got the wrinkles down here. This time we'll work from right to left like so. Just take these lines out. More or less leave that texture on the chin. And just go over a couple of areas down here. We can just see a bit of a wrinkle on this side of the face. And just some wrinkles around the eyes. So we'll heal those out as well. And sometimes you can see here we've healed from a softer area so it looks really out of place, in which case we can just step back using Edit and Undo. And then we can try that again, sampling from a different area. And in some cases you might have to get quite detailed with a small brush and just use single clicks rather than click dragging. OK, just a couple of areas to take care of. There was that mark on the nose. There's a mark on the forehead up here. And that will do. So hopefully then, you can begin to see the practical advantages of using frequency separation. By separating our image into different frequencies, we can do the kind of retouching adjustments that would otherwise be very, very difficult. So if you imagine for a second, you've got this one image layer and you've got all the lines and blemishes on the face and so on, trying to retouch and clone and heal those out where you're modifying both the tone and the high frequency detail simultaneously would be very, very difficult. And you probably wouldn't achieve at the end of the day a realistic textural looking result. So for this example, I've just used the healing brush tool, but don't forget you do have a variety of retouching tools. So you've got the patch tool, blemish removal, in painting you can even use. I tend to use in painting sometimes on the high frequency layer when I'm trying to remove areas like wrinkles and lines and so on, because it does a great job at retaining that fine detail and texture. And we've also got the clone brush tool here, which again is more useful for the high frequency layer and is a bit more brute force than using the healing brush tool. So it's worth experimenting with all of those tools. So there's a quick primer on frequency separation. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums. And don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. In particular, the tutorial on removing lens flares in landscape photography uses frequency separation to achieve that result. Thank you for watching.